Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on replacing the radiator with this new one. Uh, I'm also going to be changing the way the electric fan is controlled. Right now I'm using a cheap Chinese fan controller and I don't like it. It's not working well. And again, someone on Facebook had pointed out to me a better way of doing it using some temperature switches and three relays. So we're also going to be doing that since we're going to have to drain the coolant anyway. Let's get to work. Okay everyone, so the first thing I'm going to do is drain the radiator. Uh, it's really odd. The radiator still has a lot of fluid in it and I caught as much as I could in a clean bucket because technically the fluid is still good. So I'm going to try to catch as much fluid as possible and while the radiator is draining I'm going to take this apart because this is the temperature probe for this cheap Chinese fan controller and we're going to be replacing it with this and I'm hoping I'll be able to get that on about like that. So. Let's get to work. Okay everyone, now that I have this set up, it's time to remove the radiator now that it's been drained. I've got to disconnect the two hoses. I need to disconnect the automatic transmission lines. I actually still need to take this off. I've, I've got a bit of work left to do, but it should come out pretty easily. So, back to work. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but I disconnected the automatic transmission lines. I put this hose in between the two ports on the radiator so I wouldn't create a spill, but I didn't plug off the automatic transmission lines I pulled off, so I just created a massive mess on my floor. So, lesson learned there, but now the only thing I have to do is disconnect the lower radiator hose. I'm going to get the bucket underneath of it because I'm pretty sure it's still going to dump more coolant out, and then we'll be able to disconnect the radiator and lift it out. So let's get back to work. Okay, everyone, the joys of owning a right hand drive. Now, I kind of knew it was too good to be true, but when I got this radiator, it said it was compatible with all models, including right-hand drive and left-hand drive. It's not, but these brackets are bolted to it just like these are. So all I have to do is unbolt the fan, unbolt my two brackets, unbolt these brackets, swap them, and then we'll be good to go. So with that said, I'm going to turn time-lapse back on and get to work. Okay guys, to be completely transparent, I messaged the guy on Facebook who's been helping me out and introduced me to the two-speed fan setup. Huge shout out to him, I messaged him, I said, hey, I can't get this to work. What am I doing wrong? 
he gave me a call and turns out you really need two fans for that setup and I finally understand in my head how it works. So what I'm going to do is not worry about the two speed fan setup right now. I'm going to hook up one relay. I'm going to be using this temperature switch which is 180 degrees. So the fan will come on at 180, it will turn off around 160 and it actually makes the wiring for all of this really simple. So back to time lapse. Okay, so we have the electric fan all wired up to the relay and the temperature switch. I know ideally you would want the temperature sensor closer to where the heat is in the radiator, but it's really easy to hook up the temperature switch on the Kubota V2403. And if I need to compensate for the heat loss once it gets to that temperature sensor, I can get a lower temperature sensor to get everything configured correctly. But for what I'm doing today, this will work just fine. So now we are gonna be using this kit to fill the radiator. And once I get a lot of fluid into it, we're gonna be taking the Wrangler outside. I'm gonna park it on a fairly steep hill on my property so that the radiator is the highest point. And we are gonna bleed the radiator, which I didn't do the last time, which is why I think the, my last radiator busted. So let's get to fill and cooling. Okay, I've almost got the radiator to the point where I feel comfortable moving it. And then I just happened to look over. We need to put more transmission fluid in the transmission from all the fluid that I lost when I disconnected the lines and spilled fluid everywhere. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Then we're gonna start it up. I'm gonna check the transmission real quick because that really needs to be at the correct level. And then we'll go outside and do this. So back to work. Okay guys, I got the transmission fluid back in it, started it up, I kept pouring more in until it was at the right level on the dipstick, so I'm happy with that. I am now going to move the Wrangler to a place on my property where I can tilt it pretty good so I can make the radiator the highest point and we're gonna start bleeding the coolant system. So, see you soon. Okay everyone, I am parked on a pretty steep hill on my property. This part of the radiator is now the highest point. We're gonna put the bucket in it and add more radiator fluid. We're gonna start bleeding it. So, time lapse. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, the hood is up because we are gonna be working on the cooling system yet again today. So, after I bled the system yesterday, I took it out for a drive and it immediately got very hot again. These engines are so thermally efficient that if you're going 35, 40 miles per hour, you should have so much air going through the radiator, you shouldn't have the fan come on and the fan keeps coming on. So I suspect that my thermostat is stuck closed, which is giving me all my heating issues. But this is where having a friend like Ronnie is so amazing. Ronnie's old school hot rod. So I called him yesterday just to confirm that the thermostat was the issue. And he said, hey, do the fender washer trick. He being me, I don't know what he's talking about. I was like, what fender washer trick? Apparently the old school hot rodders, 
when they had a the thermostat that would go bad, you could replace the thermostat with a fender washer and would basically do the same thing that a thermostat does. And he also gave me the theory behind thermostats. It's not exactly what I thought it was. Basically, a thermostat is there to restrict the flow of coolant so the coolant has more time to scavenge the heat out of the metal block. And seeing as I cannot get this thermostat very quickly and I really want to have this on the road and I kind of want to make sure that the thermostat is the problem, we're going to be removing the thermostat, putting in a fender washer, bleeding the system again, and testing it. So let's get to work. Okay, everyone, I have the thermostat off. There should be way more coolant in here than there is. So I definitely think this thermostat is the problem. Quite frankly, I don't think we actually got enough coolant ever in the system. So what I'm gonna do now is go through my shop because I have several buckets of these fender washers. And I'm gonna try to find one that's the right size. So I'll be back. Okay, everyone, it took me a little while, but I finally found my stash of fender washers. I found this one which has a smaller hole and it fits real well. Then I found this one which has a bigger hole and also fits really well. So I think what we're going to try to do is use the smaller one first, see how it does. If I'm not happy with the temperatures, we'll pull it apart again and put on the bigger one. Well, as always, I show everything I do, even the stupid crap too. I didn't check to make sure this could go in there. I stupidly made the assumption that because it fit right there, it would go in there and it does not. Okay guys, after looking at the thermostat and everything and seeing what's going on, this opening is slightly smaller than this because that's how it holds the thermostat in place. I really like the washer idea. I really want to try it out. I can get another one of these housings if I screw this up. But this housing is just its what's causing the water leak right now. So I'm going to get a carbide bit and I'm just going to take a slight angle all the way around off of this housing to see if I can't get this to seal flush. Okay, I've been grinding against the housing at an angle so I could still apply pressure to the washer. And I went really slowly. I kept checking with the washer to see how deep it was going. And I think I could take off just a hair more because it, it still bounces a little bit. But I'm going to try putting the gasket on it and tightening it and seeing if it won't seal. Because I don't want to take too much material off. So I think I'm going to try that real quick. Okay, so it looks like it's sealed pretty good. Um, it looks flush, but, and I didn't realize what I was hearing before, when I went to fill it up last time, I heard air escaping, and that was because I didn't have a seal. So, instead of doing time lapse, I'm gonna let the camera just keep on rolling. I'm gonna pour some coolant in it, and we're gonna see if we can hear any air escaping. And if I had been smart, I would have actually cleaned up all the coolant off of it first to make sure it had sealed, and I didn't do that. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm not completely convinced it's sealed. Uh, I'm going to open the shop real quick, turn on the engine. It's going to make a lot of noise because I got coolant everywhere. But I just want to see if coolant starts seeping out 
from that housing. If so, we need to drain the coolant again and take some more material off of that housing. Be right back. Fire in the hole. Okay, I'd say that was actually really successful. I'm a little bit surprised. We're gonna button this all up real quick, take it back outside to a hill, and bleed the coolant system again. And this time we don't have to wait for the thermostat to open because there's not a thermostat. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, everyone, I've parked on a different hill. I like this hill because it gets this corner of the Jeep up the highest. So I'm about to pour some more coolant in here. We're gonna turn it on and just let the system bleed. I don't have to worry about the thermostat opening because we now just have a washer, but I'm also curious to see if the fan comes on. So, time lapse. Okay guys, we've bled the system. I'm really happy with it. Just looking at the few gauges that I have, my exhaust gas temperature was almost 80 degrees cooler and it's hotter today than it was the other day when I was bleeding the system. So I'm actually gonna hook up the GoPro on the inside. We're gonna take it for a quick drive and I wanna see how this has affected my exhaust temperatures and boost now that we are properly cooling the Kubota V2403. Okay, so I'm gonna say that was a complete success. Again, I replaced the thermostat that was stuck and the other thing I noticed once I got back, this is a 71 Celsius thermostat. So I believe that's about 159 degrees and the fan was coming on before. So this is completely locked up. Now again, I replaced it with a washer, not this one, a slightly different one. That is not recommended for long time use and come winter time when I wanna have heat, I'm gonna to have to put a proper thermostat in and I'm probably gonna put one a little bit hotter than 159 degrees, probably around 180, 185 degrees. But for the time being, it's cooling, it works. When I took my test drive, I went the reverse of my normal route and it drives way better. I have more boost, my exhaust temperatures are cooler, and it's a hotter day today. And when I got back, the cooling fan wasn't even turned on. So, and everything else is kind of different. Like the engine is much quieter, it doesn't uh, vibrate as much. And I have talked to Kubota Swapper, so huge shout out to him because I have pestered the heck out of him this weekend. He really doesn't think I've hurt the motor because these are just really tough bulletproof motors. So I'm gonna run it as is for now. Again, come winter time, I'll probably have to get a new housing because I did grind that one away. But for now, we can run, we can drive, everything is better. So leave a comment down below, get this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't, you know what to do. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you have, as always, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you in the next video very soon. Goodbye.